Okay, I'm on and I'm just gonna talk because I don't really know how many people are actually gonna join here. Um, but I wanna keep my promise and start here at 9.30. Hi, I see somebody joined. Um, so, good morning guys. I, I literally like just um, made this mug of coffee that's in my Joanna Gaines mug. It's actually my favorite mug in the whole wide world and that's not a plug, like I literally love this. Like I got it out of the sink dirty just to, um, so I can put my coffee in it and I can't even hold it because it's so freaking hot. So that's fun. Um, but anyway, I, hi, I just thought I would come on and talk about, um, Restoration House. And you know, what's funny is that even as I'm thinking about it, I actually get really emotional and I'm not even ovulating. <laughs> um, I did a poll on my stories maybe like two or three days ago and, um, I was so shocked that no one, like literally 99% of the people that responded and when I asked, hey, do you guys even know what Restoration House is, how it got started? 99% um, of the people that responded said, no, we don't know. And um, another 99% when I asked if you'd wanna know, if you'd want me to go live and talk about it, um, you said yes. So here I am to talk to you about Restoration House, kind of the history of it, um, how long I've been at this. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about business versus ministry um, and how those two worlds have kind of collided for me. And um, yeah, we're just gonna get started here. So Restoration House, what in the world is Restoration House? Oh, I did wanna say after, um, after this is all done, um, I know a lot of people responded last night and said, hey, I'm not gonna be able to um, catch your live live but uh, I'd love to see it if you could save it. So it will be in my highlights later on for everyone who is interested in watching it and hearing a little bit more about um, how Restoration House got started. So anyway, Restoration House. Um, I have been at this whole blogging, furniture restoration um, thing for about 11 years now, which is kind of crazy. And I think a lot of people maybe come on to my feed and um, they have no idea. I don't want to uh, say that they make assumptions because I don't want to make assumptions about what they think, but I think they come on and they just don't really know, or, and it's totally fine um, how long I've been doing this, but it's been about 11 years that I, st I started, um, since I started Restoration House. And Restoration House started in a time for me where um, my family and I were really going through a very, 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 very difficult season. Um, it was probably one of the hardest seasons of our lives to date. Um, and my husband, Larry, he was in the military for 10 years. So we were a military family for 10 years. We moved all over the place from Texas to Florida, actually Alabama first, Texas, Florida, uh, to Seattle, which is where we live now and, um, to Hawaii. So from Seattle to Hawaii, um, I felt like God really literally just snatched us and took us to a place where at first I felt we were going to be really isolated, but it quickly became um, such a place of respite and restoration for me. So while we were in Hawaii, I uh, picked up this towel or this, this um, thing where I just th started thinking, I, I got to create, like I got to do something. I have to do something to get my mind off of um, all the things that are going on. So. Backstory, in Florida, when we lived there, I actually started a business called Polywag Talks, and that was making children's clothing. I um, was selling in local boutiques. I was getting ready to take um, items to market, and needless to say, th that just kind of fell to the wayside just because of life and little babies, and I just decided this is really not the right time for this. So getting to Hawaii, I thought about that and thought, okay, I was doing that before. It was really successful. What can I do here? Um, well, in Hawaii, if any of you have ever lived overseas or um, anywhere, um, or maybe even Hawaii, um, you know how much how much it is or how expensive it is to actually um, ship furniture. So in Hawaii, I was just thinking, it's so expensive expensive to ship furniture. How can I get what I want and the look that I want without spending all that money? And to be honest, being in the military again, obviously we weren't making like a million dollars a year. So I said, I'm gonna start shopping these thrift stores and um, some of these um, garage sales and everything, and I'm just gonna grab furniture and I'm gonna make my own and paint my own. So that's how I started Restoration House, technically. It was called Me and My House then, so if any of you get an email from me sometimes, you might get it from that um, 
the email address, um, me and my house. And it, I called it me and my house. I started doing furniture for myself in my home. And then people would come in and they'd say, oh my gosh, where'd you buy that piece of furniture? And I'd say, I made it. And they'd say, can you do that for us? And I'm like, sure, I'll do that. And how much would you charge? Oh, I don't know. Let me get back to you on that. Um, so that began kind of this journey of discovering that I had a gift and uh, for restoring furniture. And so I started by, I started going to all the garage sales and all the thrift stores and, um, and all these secondhand shops and literally like haggling with uh, the sellers or the, the business owners and uh, collecting literally all of these uh, furniture items to store in our garage at that time. And I, I remember being so excited for this new um, new thing that I'd found. I mean, you think about it, all you moms out there, you know, you know, like when we're in the thick of it, you just feel like I am just a mom. Like, what am I gonna do what am i what is my what is my life like what is life what is the what does the rest of my life look like it can't I, this can't be it so i just remember feeling like um i needed something to give me an outlet and that was my outlet so i thought i thought very superficially it was just gonna be something that would give me something to do and so i started buying all this furniture and i put it in uh the garage and i remember um going out every night into the garage and beginning to strip away um, the you know old varnish and stain and um, really just repairing this furniture. And again, going back to remember, if you remember, th that was a time in my life where things were really crazy chaotic. Um, my relationship with God was not um, where it had been before. So um, going out to the, that, those nights in the garage, I just remember um, I would put worship music on and I would start stripping away the furniture and as cheesy as it may sound or um, as crazy or weird as it may sound to some of you, um, God really began to speak to me through that process of, of stripping down the furniture and stripping away the old things and, and reminding me um, of who I was and where I'd come from and, and where and, and revealing to me even um, some of the areas where in situations in my life where he had been that I didn't know. Um, and so it was. It became this, uh, this very much a communion, if you will, between God and I in the, restor in, in the restoring process of that furniture going out to the garage every night. And I remember um, really feeling every day like I excited, like I couldn't wait to go out and and have time with God again. It was just this beautiful thing that God used in my life to to begin a restoration process that actually to this day um, still continues, right? So so going out to that garage, you know, putting on the music and just going for it. I, I mean, some nights, you know, even in anger or even in despair or, um, you know, carrying all types of anxiety or worry or fear, um, I just needed it. And I didn't even know at that time, I think, what that would turn into. So um, fast forwarding a little bit through that uh, process, Larry goes to Afghanistan. He's gone for almost a year and I am in Hawaii with two technically toddlers and a baby and I am freaking out and I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life right now. And also not really knowing how I was going to continue doing this furniture thing because I'd, I'd gotten so deep into it and really um, began to enjoy it and had clients um, and everything. So it was just um, a really hard time for me in the sense that it was like there, there had been this thing given to me that was so beautiful and then it just felt like it was being taken away. Anybody relate to that? Um, so... I said I was going to talk a little bit about community, and I think that that is where, to be honest, we had been in the military for um, seven years at that time. Um, it was during that time that community, even the word community, became more real to me. Now, a little bit of background. I am from Alabama, small town Alabama. I saw Jen um, get on. She's actually Jennifer. Are you still there? I don't know, but... Um, Jennifer, I just saw her pop up. She's from the same town that I'm from. We've been friends for oh, like 24 years. That's kind of crazy. Um, but um, small town Gunnersville, 
if if there were a definition for community, I mean, if there if if there was like a town that defined community, I would say Gunnersville, Alabama, definitely defined defines community. So it wasn't that I'd never experienced community. Obviously, I think if you are like me, like sometimes you. Um, don't realize a lot of things. Obviously, we don't realize a lot of things when we're young and, and as we get older, we um, reflect and we grow and we mature and we recognize certain things that we maybe didn't recognize before. So fast forwarding to Hawaii from Guntersville, which is like a 35 year span. Um, I realized like I need community like I need s somebody to help me and we had been so blessed with um, a church family, a church community there that at that time, I didn't realize they were so amazing, um, but I decided, hey, I need people in my life. I need people who are going to do this with me, who are going to support me um, through this time when Larry is away. And so I began to reach out, which I don't know how many of you guys are out there like this, but at that time, I wanted to do everything by myself. That was practically kind of the way I was raised, not intentionally, but um, it was just the way I'd been, I'd learned over my life to really just be independent and take care of myself. So initially when Larry left, I'm like, hey, I got this, I can do this. I don't need anybody else. And so, but that obviously wasn't true because I felt myself crumbling so quickly and so even without my asking, people began to come and they would take my kids and they would, um, you know, clean my house, guys. They would come and they would like clean my house. I, it was just the most ridiculous thing. And, and it was just beautiful how even in that, again, speaking of restoration house and community and God, even in, in that began to reveal to me, hey, like, I got you, number one. And number two, when I don't have you, just me, I'm using other people in your life to make sure that you're taken care of. And that was honestly, that's honestly even part of um, this story, the story of Restoration House and, and how God, God used that three years of us in Hawaii to really build um, the foundation for what you guys see out there on the other side now. And um, I just, just really think that community is an amazing, amazing, amazing thing. Um, I've had a lot of people around here ask me, "Hey, how how do you how did you build such a strong following, or um, how did you get so many followers?" Um, uh, so I thought, you, honestly, I've never really publicly talked about that. I, I always get a lot of DMs. I've gotten emails. Um, I've had other bloggers kind of ask me. Um, but I've never talked about it because to be honest, I really feel like I have personally shied away from that conversation just because it seems like such a taboo thing to talk about. Um, nobody wants to talk about, well, I shouldn't say nobody because a lot of people, business people on Instagram, I guess, are talking about how do we grow our, you know, following? How do we get more engagement? How do we get more impressions? Um, and I've had conversations recently with friends on this platform uh, about that th about that thing and about where the line is. Like, where is that boundary? Where when do you know that it's you've gone too far? Um, but you know, growth versus community. I have never personally um, really at the beginning at least I'd say maybe more so over the past year I have but but the first 10 years of Restoration House I um, really never thought any I'm sorry I'm getting distracted because there's someone asking to join and I feel like it's kind of like a bot and I'm just not like I'm not here for it like stop playing with me um, and they're like messaging. I don't know. You guys can probably see, see some of it. Um, but, uh, and I totally lost my train of thought, but with, with, okay. So with community, I've never set out to grow a community. I'll just say that I never set out to, I never had goals for 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, and so on. That was never something that I set out to do here at Restoration House. 
Um, and that's, I say that sincerely with all my heart. I wish, I wish I had the wherewithal, the forethought and the planning expertise to tell you, here are 10 strategic ways you can grow your Instagram following. Here are three ways, three tips for, I don't, that's not really the way that I operate. Um, and again, I just talked to someone about this yesterday. I wish it was not saying that I don't think about Restoration House as a business in some ways and strategize and plan. I have to do that, especially um, as we're rolling out into um, this book release and I just have to be a little more organized. It's just not my norm. I am a, a free spirit to the nth Enneagram seven. Who's the Enneagram seven out there? I am just floating and flowing and creating and doing all the things and um, God's gonna bless me with somebody outside of my husband who is amazing, concrete, sequential, just extremely um, talented and gifted in the area. That's just not my way, but I believe that somebody's gonna come my way who's gonna help me get all these thoughts, put them in one place together and make them amazing, more amazing. Um, but yeah, I never set out to grow um, this, this community, if you will. Um, I will say what I have been intentional about is, um, making people know and believe that that i care about their humanness um i don't know if that makes sense but but people um I, hey listen not just people I, i'll stop saying people me myself you us we um i think that there's never been more of a time where we're looking for authenticity in um, communication and authenticity in relationship and you know as this world of social media um, expands and broadens i think more and more we will want real connection and i think for me that's always been if, if we're going to say hey kenisha what's something you've been really intentional about if it's not been you've not been intentional really in these are strategizing for growth what are some ways that you've been intentional um, and I have uh, done my best to be intentional with connecting with people, creating community around here. And so I, I can tell you how I've done that. And, um, you know, things like responding when people leave comments. Um, I don't care how many. I don't care if it's, you know, I've never had a thousand comments. But, you know, if it's in the hundreds, you know, maybe it'll take me a couple of days, you know, hopefully. A lot of times I do try to respond pretty immediately, even if it's just with an emoji or whatever. Um, but um, co responding, connecting with people, telling people thank you. You you have no idea uh, how how far that goes just to, to show gratitude for people who are connecting with you, people who connect with the message that you send. Um, saying thank you to people for being here that's a big deal uh the time the, the fact that people would take time out of their day to comment the fact that people would take time to to dm to say thank you to me that makes me emotional um it's a really big deal and i don't take it um i don't take that lightly i really am thankful for that and i appreciate it so um those things are important to me and i, and I think even a lot of people, you know, when they say again, like, hey, how'd you get all the followers? I'm like, I didn't get all the followers. Um, I think that honestly, at the end of the day, I think people really connect, hopefully with, um, yes, the pretty things. I think that's the, that is the, the primary thing or the first thing people see, obviously, because we're, we're all pretty visual. But I think beyond what you see at Restoration House and beyond what you see on my feed, um, you connect with the message. Um, of Restoration House and maybe that brings me to my um, another point which is uh, what is the message of Restoration House uh, what why are you here why do you exist and I think that it's really easy for me today to sit here and tell you why I exist and why Restoration House um, even ex exists and, and why I'm still in on Instagram um, doing this thing and you know not just on Instagram but my blog and other uh, social media platforms um, but oh I just got like oh, all worked up um, which happens a lot if you know me you know I cry all the time doesn't take much um, but I am continuing to lose my train of thought so I'm so sorry guys um, but okay why why restoration house exists I think that like two years ago I 
maybe not, maybe four, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll give, give myself that. Four, about four years ago, I found myself in a really uh, tight place where I felt like, gosh, I really love doing, you know, interior styling and tablescaping and all these beautiful things, but God, I really love you. And I don't know if this is ministry because for me, up until that time, ministry looked very different and had looked very different. I never knew anybody who um, it communicated, at least in this way, um, who did ministry outside of the church, outside of literally the church building. So it was a really a new concept for me that ministry could look a thousand different ways. And um, I don't know how many of you out there will see this and have struggled with that or deal with that. But for me, it came down to the realization that this is ministry, number one. And um, number two, um, my life, I cannot separate who I am from what I do. They are one and the same. And so when I think about Restoration House, and, and hopefully um, this will be the same for you guys as we continue on this journey together, um, when you think about Restoration House, this is ministry for me. Um, and I know that may be a new concept for some of you out there that may be um, something that's kind of quirky, and sometimes it is kind of quirky. Um, sometimes it feels kind of weird, and that's okay. Um, I'm gonna grab my coffee here because it's now warm enough for me to actually hold. Um, but I, Restoration House, I, I cannot separate my love for Jesus. Um, I cannot be successful um, in my life, whether it's Restoration House or any area, mothering, being a wife, being a friend, without the direction, the guidance, and the love, the grace, the mercy, the power that Jesus Christ himself gives me. So to try to separate Restoration House, now now hear my heart, um, if this were some t other type of business, I'm not saying if you're a business person, it, it, you may not talk about it all the time, um, but for me, and for what I do here, for this time and for this season, this is where I am and this is what I do. Uh, Restoration House is my ministry. Um, Restoration House will always be, I cannot, you know, if you uh, were here for the beginning of the story, what God did in me through the restoration of furniture and now through Restoration House, I will be forever indebted to. And so it is forever it's forever a thread throughout the story of Restoration House. It's forever a thread throughout the story of Kenesha Bikes. Um, so, and it has been since I was, since before I was born, right? Um, if we want to get super um, theological here. But um, yeah, I, I just think that um, if you are a business person out there who also, um, you know, is, you know, a believer then then I think that what we we can do is reconcile the fact that um, who we are and what we do can't be separated from that and and however you choose to to you know do business is your business um, but again for me I just realized um, in growing this community if I stay true to the message um, that God has given me and if I stay true to the purpose um, that he's placed in my heart, which is to ultimately um, give freedom to people. And, and I, it's, it's again, guys, it's such a quirky thing because I talk about it and I think about it. I'm like, how does that work? How do I talk about pillows on a sofa um, or a lamp or a light and bring glory to God? Well, the simple fact is, is that everything, and this is, <laughs> sounds so weird as I'm saying, I'm like, this sounds kind of um, but everything actually really is connected to him. And I think it's because the source of what I'm communicating and what I'm sharing is always from the heart and I carry that. So um, anyway, I don't want to get super deep here right now because I don't have a problem doing that. You guys who know me know I can go deep real fast. 
Um, but I think ultimately that's how I reconcile that. And that's how it's, it's an easy way to say, hey, like, I'm just going to do what I do. I'm just going to do what I love. I'm going to share what I love. Um, I am going to strategize and plan a little bit more. Um, I am going to plan content a little bit more. But at the end of the day, um, I just want to stay true to the message that I've always carried, which is, God wants to restore and he wants to redeem every single part of our lives. And my specific um, charge that I feel like I've been given is in the area of home. And that's really, it's really just that simple. Um, what I hope is that somewhere, somehow, some way that that message of freedom in the home, that message that says your home doesn't have to be perfect to be beautiful, that message that says, um, Gosh, if you're broken, there's a solution for that. Um, gosh, if you don't have um, everything you need in life or in your home, there's a solution for that. Um, if you feel discontented, um, there's a solution for that. And um, I do think that God uses our homes in a million ways to really bring clarity um, and to bring healing and to bring restoration. And I do believe that that it is my job and it is my responsibility and it is my, my purpose in this space to um, really help convey that message and to bring it to the people. <laughs> so um, that's why I'm here, that's why I exist, if any of you were wondering, which I don't really feel like people wonder that. I think people come on Instagram and they're just like, oh look, a pretty picture, oh look, there's a cute brown girl who is funny sometimes and I like her and they connect with me and then, you know, down the road, um, they realize there's more to it. And that's, I, it's that, all of that is amazing and wonderful and beautiful. I get so many messages that say, I started following you for your, you know, beautiful images or I started following you because of your quotes or whatever and, and, and they go even further to say, but now, I see that there's more to this and I think that that's um that's amazing I think that it even speaks to me about it's just a continual reminder that hey you just do what you love you do what you're passionate about you do what God God's placed in your heart and you run with that um so yeah I don't even know what my time is like and I don't even know do they tell you on here how long you've been running or anything oh hi yes is that Vicky um, I forgot what I said, but I'm so glad that you're all in on the conversation. I love that. Um, so yeah, guys, I, I, I think that going back to that whole, um, the last bit of that conversation with the purpose of Restoration House and the message and all of those good things, um, I don't think that the message always has to be blatant. I don't think that my purpose, um, the fact that I, um, am called, by God to do what I do in this season, because it may not look this way 15 years from now. Restoration House could look completely different in a year. I mean, forget 10 years, in a year. So that's why I say for this season, but I don't think that I always have to share a scripture or, you know, I, I just think that God is intricately woven into every single aspect of our lives, whether we like it or not. So, and, and he's such an integral, integral, integ integral, integral <laughs> part of who I am. So, um, I can't get away from it. I, I couldn't get away from it in anything that I share. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys feel that. I hope you feel that. I hope that message, um, if you're here, I hope it resonates with you. Um, I'm just going to keep doing what I do. Um, I won't say that I don't get caught up in the numbers sometimes. I'm going to, you know, in full transparency, I'm not going to say that I don't, um, get caught up in, uh, you know, feeling like I need to do what other people are doing to make myself look successful. Um, oh, that was something I was going to talk about too. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. How much time do I have? I have like one minute. This has been like really fun. I only have one minute left. Um, so I, I wanted to talk a little bit about collaborations and brand work or brand partnerships because I feel like that's something that, um, you guys see a lot on this on this platform, not just my feed, but on this platform form on Instagram, and I think that that's been a really um, 
funny area for me personally, again, going back to business versus ministry, um, I've always kind of struggled with that, but I've come to a place where I'm like, hey, like I'm putting a lot of energy, a lot of time, a lot of effort into um, what I produce, whether it be on the blog or on Instagram. And there are ways that uh, I think God has given me to um, help my family. And so from time to time, you will see me collaborate with brands. Um, I will tell you that when you see those things, please know that you see that one, but I probably have said no to 10 others and not because they're, the companies or the brands aren't amazing or you know the small business isn't amazing or whatever. It's because I just feel like at the heart of who I am and what Restoration House stands for, there's a specific standard that I carry that maybe other um, bloggers, influencers do not carry. And I watch numbers grow, I watch the likes grow, I watch the engagement grow, and I wonder, I struggle just like everybody else with, am I making the right decision? And I think that for me at the end of the day, it comes down to um, just going back again to what I know, looking and reflecting over what God has done in me and what God has done in Restoration House over the past 11 years and that he is just going to be faithful and that yes it is okay for me to partner it's okay for me to share affiliates it's okay for me to do those things um, but for me I've made the decision that it's not going to be in excess um, and that I have a certain amount that I'll do per month or per year and that'll be it um, and that's okay. I, I, I also want to make sure that I clarify and make clear that what I'm saying is for me. So if, um, you know, other people, obviously like the community that, that, um, I gather around, around here, um, lots of people do lots of different things and I do them with them and it's fun. And, um, we love collaborating and partnering with brands. And that is just so fun because I think that I'm in a really, um, interesting space because I, while I lean on the interior design, interior styling side, um, I also um, see this as ministry. So there's just a, a really fine line there for me a lot of times between um, whether I'm, you know, doing this for the purpose of just sharing something pretty, which a lot of times I just kind of have to ask myself that, like, hey, what's the purpose in this post? What's the purpose in this, uh, this blog post that I share or whatever? Asking myself, okay, hey, okay, well, if it's just about home, 100%, let's collaborate with that brand. Or if, hey, this is really something that's exclusive to um, someone's spiritual walk or my personal spiritual or faith-based experience, um, let's keep this clean. Um, so, so for me, it really, guys, I just, I think I really just want to express the heart of who I am and how I make decisions around here. And not that I necessarily need to explain, um, any of that to any of you, uh, really, like, I don't think that you're like wanting me or asking me to do that, but I do think it's important to communicate, um, my heart all the time. Um, if I have the opportunity to do so, but I think also in growing community that we also know that, um, that if you've been around here long enough, you just know my heart and you don't have to question that. So anyway, I have to wrap because it's been 30 minutes and I um, didn't even drink. I, by the way, it just, you know, was cute in my hand, but, and that's why, because if I drink, then I can't talk and I really need to talk to you guys. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna enjoy this amazing instant, by the way, Insta coffee. I will uh, post that in my story a little bit later. Um, it is the best instant coffee, better than the little Starbucks little packets. I'm not, you know, saying that it's instant coffee all the way, all day now, right? But in a pinch, and this morning it was definitely one of those times where I just needed something quick. I didn't have time to go out. Um, it's the best. It's the best. It's the best. Anyway, you guys are the best and I love you and I'm so excited for 2019 and all that it holds. My book is coming out on um, in April and it's called Restoration House. Surprise! Spoiler! Um, <laughs> um, and it's going to be beautiful. I, I'm, I'm working on saying all those things and uh, saying all the things true things about um, what this year is going to look like for me and for you. So 
thanks for being here. Thanks for joining. I think I might do these a little more often. Like I, I am working myself into seeing myself on camera and talking and um, hopefully a little more interactive. Yeah, a book. That's so cool. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, Jay. Hi. I thought you knew that. Yeah, I should, I should probably talk about it a little bit more. Um, but the book, yeah, the book is um, coming out in April and it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun conversation. We're going to talk about home. It's going to be very practical or it is very practical, but it also is very spiritual. I'm sharing a lot about my own personal home story, how I grew up, um, how God um, broke a lot of things. Um, in my life. Again, some of what I shared today through Restoration House, but I go a little bit deeper um, in some of that and talk about Restoration House in my life and all those good things. So I am really excited to share that with you guys and I can't wait. And again, I'm going to wrap here, but I love you guys. Thanks for sh um, sharing your time with me. And maybe I'll do this like every Monday. Would that be fun? Every Monday? That might be fun. That might be fun to start the week with you. Okay. Now I know how to end it because I'm like, how do I end this thing? All right. Love you guys. Thanks for joining.